Hey guys! We are dealing with a crisis, and not necessarily because I showed up late. Um, that was me heating up my food. Because I forgot to heat up my food. <laughs> Today was a hectic kind of day. But how's everyone doing? Hey Artemis, how's it going? Have you picked out a tag for Miracle yet? I'm so excited. And I'm really excited to see how things go. For those who don't know, Artemis. No tag yet, but we're getting there. Awesome! For those of y'all who don't know, Artis, Artemis is also an artist. And she's currently working on a project to start a new VTuber group. And honestly, I'm excited. Because she's been sharing the different, um, the different concepts and stuff for the members. And doing research on how to run a group. And looking into the ethics and stuff especially now that's becoming more imperative as we're starting to see more corpos fall apart because of the rampant abuse that's been going on within the industry and stuff and it's nice to see the amount of effort that's going into it yeah like it's a lot honestly but today we're gonna get right into it I got a commission that I'm working on I got a commission earlier this week I'm so happy cuz like it's hard out here it'll be a simple it'll be simple though cuz um I do really well with portraitures or at least I try thank you also, congratulations on the Valentine's Day um, commissions, because I've been seeing that as well. They're so cute. The outfits are so cute. I swear to God, when I get when I get stable, when I get money, I'm I'm gonna commission you, cause like I look at art and I get sad. But um. Speaking of looking at art and getting sad, the reason why I named this stream the way that I did is because of a couple of things. You look at your own art and get sad, but your art is cool. Whenever I look at my art, I don't necessarily get sad, but I do know that I want to change my direction. Especially now that I know like the kind of inspirations and subject matter that I want to try to depict and stuff and I feel like my current art style isn't at the stage that it needs to be in order to achieve that. Not that you need a specific art style in order to depict something but I feel like art style um, actually does a lot to reinforce the vibes. I have extremely high expectations for myself, which is crazy because I've only been doing comms seriously for a year. Yeah, but like, are they high expectations or... Because like, it's one thing to want to put your best self forward. But I guess, what do you consider your best self forward? Is Mix It Up not working? I'm gonna cry. Thank you for the head pat though, Zivia. I don't know why Mix It Up is being weird. That's probably why the chat wasn't showing up on the chat overlay. I kind of rushed to get in because I knew I was running late, but it'll be fun. We'll have a good day. But, um... I 
Oh, that's a delayed effect. I want to cry. And then it's not even doing it with my Ponko. Never mind. It, it'll be fine. We'll just deal with Scuff Stream. It'll be okay. Um. It's text based. Well, yeah, it's gonna be text based until I could come up with like. I gotta use like a sound effect and stuff in order to have the actual on screen alert. Plus, scuff stream, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> rest in peace, but um, what was I thinking? High expectations with art and wanting to put your best self forward. But I guess, like, you have to be able to define what your best self is. And I guess with me, it... Because my main focus is, like, visual storytelling and character design and stuff, I mainly care about clarity. Like, clarity comes before everything else. I want people to understand what the hell I'm trying to do, you know. And then I have this frame here because I know with PFPs, they only have the circle and stuff. So I want to make sure that the face actually fits in the circle because um, sometimes whenever I do icons, I forget that and then it ends up looking like weird and offset but um but yeah I mainly care about clarity and even though I do have an aesthetic idea in mind because like um for anybody who used to follow my previous edition of my twitter account yeah but like here's the thing what do you define as good art on a personal level and also in general I feel like that's where we can trip ourselves up sometimes if we don't know what our tastes are or have a good understanding of what defines our taste then trying to get into art is going to be difficult as fuck. Okay, then you take reference to that. And also, not just knowing what the inspirations are, but like, why are they inspirational? Because um, right now, I'm doing, I'm still in the research stage. I'm going to be in the research stage for a long bit, because like gathering image resources and stuff is going to be a process. But, um, but essentially what I want to achieve is, um, having a graphic art that's sort of reminiscent of combination of advertisements and religious imagery. Cause like, I really like learning about like spirituality And um, with the kind of worlds that I like to create, they deal with a lot of monster designs and references to different cultures and stuff because I'm passively into anthropology. So like pretty much what I'm researching are major movements that have dealt with that, whether it's like illuminated manuscripts, because, you know, when the Catholic Church was in charge of like making Bibles and stuff and redistributing that, um, looking at Persian miniatures, um, looking at Tibetan temples and stuff and then I'm also looking at major art movements that dealt with graphic arts like the the um the what's it called 
not the Venetian secession. It's the art movement that Gustav Klimt was a part of. And then also looking at Art Deco, Art Nouveau, um, the Chicano art movement, the the Soviet uh, art movement, pop art. I think originally I worked towards refining my style to better draw web comics. Mm hmm. Awesome. And then I'm also looking into um, like different comics and stuff that I like as well. Like going back to basics. Like I'll probably be looking at Black Butler again because um, Yama Taboso was very much a heavy influence when I started to draw more in a manga style in middle school. Like, you know that one saying? Where it's like, if you want to get good at something, be obsessed with something. I drew Sebastian so many times throughout middle school and high school because I wanted to get good at drawing him. Because drawing him was fucking difficult. Like, he was such a pain in the ass. Thank you. Please send me some. Cause um I, I love stories that are like heavy with world building or they have really thick lines. That's probably why I read so much shonen, because like I love shoujo stories, but like the lines are very delicate. Like I feel like with shoujo I tend to take more fashion inspiration than like art style inspiration. Okay, then I'll definitely read a bride story. Send me a list and I'll put it on my reading list because I'm actually like, I keep saying that I'll watch something and that I'll put it on my list and then the list is like a random fucking phone note that gets buried under my, buried within my phone because like, hmm. I'm gonna draw an actual ear and then I'm gonna draw the points because that feels a lot better than what I was trying to do. <laughs> Lots of trial and error when it comes to drawing stuff. But um, I'm, I'm doing research and stuff because like, I feel like, like the reason why I titled the stream the way that I did and why I use Andre Leon Talley's like interview ears are too damn small what am I doing I like too many styles I just know I like line variations which I had in my style before my hard crash well that's the start it is unfortunate whenever we deal with art crashes especially when like you're doing art as a career and there's like an expectation to do consistent output and stuff because of that like fear of losing visibility <coughs> excuse me my nose <coughs> losing visibility no longer being yeah and there's also that we should not have to work just to fucking live every day like I'm at a point where I don't want it's not that I don't want to work it's just that I don't want to have to the problem with work is the obligation of it not the okay but like Zivia I think it's better if you just write down like instead of trying to find a commonality between them um find the traits that you like Cause that's what that's literally what I'm doing with my thing I have a big ass list of artists from various different movements and then some of them some of the movements don't necessarily have artists attached to them because they weren't like credited or anything because it was just like this is an ancient ass temple 
and nobody put their names on their shit because they're they're just trying to they're just trying to pay um tribute to Brahma or somebody. But like write down what you like. That helps. What down write down what you like about it and why. Cuz I feel like the why is a part that isn't really um focused on a lot whenever people do media analysis. Especially if we're going into like art and making it. I feel like it's important to have at least a a range or a ballpark, a general idea of what shapes your aesthetics because that gives you a clearer idea. I'm eating a burger and fries because like, okay, I'm so pissed at my, at my school. Every time we had like Chinese food night, I, I end up missing it either because like I'm too tired to go out or I'm out doing something else. And then the one time I actually go to Asian food night, I realized that it's not even shit. Cause like we had orange chicken. Why is the orange chicken just flat chicken nuggets that you get from the freezer, but it's put in a glaze. I was mad as hell. Yes, on the topic of styles. And the bastardization of culture. Are we talking about Vizzy Pop? Because I feel like it's going to get there. Because I got to remind myself to block that tag. Because like, okay, I switched my accounts. I created a new account. Because I felt like my old page was like um getting out of control like it was becoming um it it was not the kind of page that I wanted and it's partially because I talk a lot of shit and I feel like I was surrounding myself yeah I was about to say that that's why I titled the stream the way that I did but I'll get there in just a minute like for those who don't know I switched twitters Like, I just created a new Twitter because I needed to start over. Because um, I felt like I was creating a place where people can go to get their neg- their negativity um, affirmed. But then when I started to talk about stuff like behaviors and structures, then apparently that's me going too far and being an instigator and stuff. Well, the thing is that they don't have to draw us. Like, I feel like I don't want to both sides this argument, but like, I'm also tired of people begging to be validated by artists who have made it clear that they don't see our features as worthy to be drawn because like, I find it very frustrating. Like a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of art. I'm seeing a lot of VTubers of colors and black VTubers in particular because honestly we struggle the most because anti-blackness is literally everywhere. It's like the only thing that humanity could be united in is hating on black people, right? Um, I should draw this a little bit different. I should follow the style of the the character sheet. Um, A lot of people talk about how finding artists that can draw us is difficult. Finding a model artist is difficult, yes. But when it comes to trying to find somebody who could draw art of you in general, that's not difficult if you actually hang out around artists in general. Because, like, I have lists and stuff, even though I'm slowly transferring my list and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Why would you want to hire somebody who's a bigot? 
And also, like, you shouldn't open comms. My thing is necessarily that you shouldn't open comms because people can have a specialty and stuff. My issue is that people are calling themselves character designers, but the only thing that they draw are white people and East Asians made to look like white people. Like, you're not a character designer. You're a white people designer. <laughs> well, no, they do have colors around. They do allow colors. As long as they're lighter than the... The, um... The shade of a paper bag. That That's the problem. Because, like... We gotta remember... Because something else that I also hate about these conversations... Is how, like, people deny... East Asians, their POC status. And it's also why whenever people talk about um, wanting more POC visibility in VTubing, I'm like, you don't want more POC visibility in VTubing. You want more POC variety in VTubing because East Asians are POC and they actually dominate the field. The problem is that a sp only... And I can't even say just East Asians. Only a specific type of East Asian is allowed within the field. Because you don't see any fat ones. You don't see any indigenous ones. Because I knew they're monoracial. They're indigenous. Most I knew are monoracial and indigenous. And they're darker. And they don't have a lot of visibility. And stuff. You want more POC variety. Block them. Like, it's just bait at this point. On the day of our Lord, <laughs> kiss three months. Why is it that nobody acts this way on any of the other months? But I feel like the reason why is because nobody acknowledges the other months. Like, we kind of acknowledge Hispanic Heritage Month. But, like, Asian American History Month and Native American History Month, nobody gives a fuck about. And that's why they don't get it because and that's why they don't get that bullshit because nobody literally notices them because I remember how a former classmate it was just like well what about the other history months and I'm like the other history months do exist but you mayo monkeys I don't think that anybody's respectful I just think that nobody thinks it fucking exists Cause like I honestly do not see that many posts and stuff. I don't see a change in logo. The most that I see is like Disney Channel acknowledging like the three Asians that they have, and they were all from the show Andy Mac. Like I'm so serious. Um, there's a saying. There's actually a quote. I can't remember who quoted it, but it was like about um social issues and how black people's black people's oppression deals with our quote-unquote over representation whereas like native americans oppression deals with their under representation like black people are oppressed by constantly putting us in the limelight to humiliate us whereas native americans are oppressed because they're constantly erased because if people think that they still exist if people don't think that they exist, because, you know, some people f straight up think that Native Americans are, like, extinct or some shit. And it's just like, if you actually acknowledge that Native Americans are still alive, then you would have to fight for them. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Especially now that affirmative action has recently been, like, eradicated. That's why you're seeing so many layoffs of people of color and shit, which, which is funny. I'm so ready to see all of the white women crying. Like not, it's not that I don't want to see white women. It's not that I want to see white women cry, but like specifically the racist white women crying because like they have benefited the most from affirmative action and they are going to be the first ones to feel the hit. It also doesn't help that we're like, dealing with literal fascism right now we're literally dealing with fascism but speaking of like blackness and art and stuff 
The reasons why the reason why imagine needing a month to be pandered to we didn't make the month to be pandered to we made the month to celebrate our accomplishments and stuff we don't need y'all to pander to us although there are some black people who could beg to differ because like i feel like a lot of black people care more about white proximity than being genuine and that's why i feel the way that i feel about black t vtubers constantly commissioning people who don't have a single black person in their portfolio like it's very frustrating as an artist dealing with non-artists sometimes and then the non-artist is just like well not everybody is an artist not everybody knows so much about the field and i'm like knowing what the fuck a portfolio is as somebody who buys art should be the bare fucking minimum for you if you do not see somebody with any of your features in that portfolio, do not give them money. And this isn't to victim blame and shit, because at the end of the day, if I'm paying money, then I expect quality. And it's like, this is why I hate it whenever people are like, oh, money is money. Money is not money. Yeah, we're talking about black VTuber comms. That's why I made this post the way that I am. And that's literally why I reference Andre Leon Talley, because like the state of art is so ass. Portfolios aren't strictly for art, but essentially it's supposed to show what you can do. And if you don't see a single Negro in the portfolio, do not give them money. I can't even call that drama because like, it's not something that the person dealing with it was being dramatic about. Like it is a valid concern because like, I prefer to not call situations like this drama because sometimes it could come across as, um, what's the word? Invalidating. It feels demeaning to know that I'll be struggling and then colorist skep artist number 400. Yeah, because they draw in a super anime style. Yeah, sounds dismissive because like drama usually implies that it's like frivolous. Is the add on? I feel like you are what people want but i feel like you should expand your clientele outside of just vtubers because like um vtubing as a space is very um what's the word it's very stale and this isn't even talking about like because you know how people are like, VTubing is oversaturated and stuff. The problem isn't that it's oversaturated. The problem is that everybody and their mom is doing the same kind of shit. And that's why I'm trying to like be a little bit different by also having long form, con long form content. Okay, I'm back. Shit, that ad break was long. Wasn't it only supposed to be like a minute and a half? Okay, okay. Let me start again. Um, So Artemis said thinking about um not doing vtuber comms anymore because you're not what people want it's not necessarily that um it was two ads three minutes that's weird i didn't even change my settings i hate scuff stream <laughs> i'm trying to talk about things that are important to me <laughs> and then this shit happens this is slavery actually Do I want to make the eyelashes that big? They should not be that big. This is this is better. 
well that long that's the problem but um what was I saying again shit um talking about your art not being what the people want I feel like you should expand your cl yes expand your horizons because VTubing as a place is fucking stale and this isn't to say that because like I hate it whenever people say that the medium is oversaturated it really isn't the problem is that everybody is doing the same kind of shit like the definition of VTuber is kind of rigid even though a VTuber is literally just a virtual performer the way that the culture has defined what that performance looked like is very rigid because like everybody is doing the same kind of shit because like um when I was on Blaze's stream the other day because she was asking um what got you into VTubing it wasn't a VTuber that got me into it it wasn't a particular VTuber that got me into it. It was more like um, I was already considering having a mascot to like speak through because I considered doing YouTubing where I would make videos about my creative process and stuff. I should have put this in a different layer. I usually put brows in a different layer. What am I doing? I wanted to share my creative process and stuff and like having a mascot would just be an easy thing to speak through because like that's easy to like brand i can't compete with the artists that everyone wants to come because they're popular like they don't say it but artist cloud is a huge pr i also think that people like be dick riding that the stateless style like i hate most mokuseki like there's so much stuff that goes into it like um because like I've been crying and throwing up about it and stuff like the state of art and how certain artists get dick road and I'm saying it like that because like I'm tired <laughs> how certain artists get dick road compared to others based off of um based off of um how do I describe it? He wants specifically this facial expression. So I'm going to give him exactly this facial expression and ask if there are any. Like, I'm only going to do the sketch today because, like, the sketch. <laughs> and then I'll try to get on to Yang because I actually want to draw Yang this month. Please, I need to finish my Ruby series. But, um... The definition is stale. Um, I wanted to be a YouTuber and I wanted to speak through a mascot in order to do it because I've seen other artists do it with and I've seen I used to follow social commentary artists that would have like a, a avatar crossing their arms while talking shit about things and I wanted to do something like that. But um, everybody thinks that being a, being a VTuber is just streaming and stuff. You don't see people using that avatar as like a uh, avenue for creation because like VTubing should be ref referring to creation and stuff in general not just doing live content the other day Donnie you can never be annoying you can be salty but not annoying Well, I can't even say salty. You could be sassy, but not annoying. Yeah. Underestimate the cringe of my past. Honestly, I was pretty cringe. I kind of wish that I went back to that cringe time, though. Now I complain a lot because if I actually talk about the things that I like, I fear rejection. 
it's not even a fear of rejection. It's more like I've gotten used to like suppressing my interests around motherfuckers. That like it, like one time, I remember months ago when I was hanging out with Pharaoh, and he was just like, "Jayla, what do you like?" And I was like, "Hansel." Like Hansel is um. I gotta protect my peace, but like the thing is, it's I gotta protect my peace, but at the same time, I shouldn't have to like compromise who I am just to have peace. And the problem is that it's become a reflex for me to suppress myself because I'm so used to being shat on. Like, is it really peace? If it comes at the expense of my own identity. Okay, how do you nose? I love drawing noses. Like, drawing noses is literally my favorite part. But at the same time, they can be kind of fickle. Yeah, finding my niche. So pretty much I've combined talking shit with creating and, but like the way that I talk shit, which is why I changed my, like I said, I, I changed my page because I felt like, um, a lot of people were coming to have their negativity affirmed. And then when I actually started talking about behaviors and shit, apparently that was going too far. Like I will, I'm still salty about that because it pisses me the fuck off. Yeah, I love putting noses on anime characters because it actually gives them character. I wish that was more normal. But um, Artemis, what you were talking about with not feeling valid and stuff because you're not what um, because I'm soft spoken already. Wait, hold on. Let me read through all of these. I'm just over here wondering if I ever get far in VTubing. I'm not sure if I could. Uh, find what actually be interesting and wouldn't put people to sleep actually putting people to sleep during the stream isn't necessarily bad because some people they just want to go and chill out like you do not have to be loud and bombastic all the time you can be a cozy streamer because you are soft spoken like think of like manly badass hero how I watch manly badass hero because when I watch a horror game I only want to be scared by the game and not by the person playing it from yelling too damn loud. I love you, Mark, and I love you, Corey, but please shut the fuck up. I'm so serious. <laughs> like, turn down the volume, for the love of Christ. <laughs> I love them to death, but I can't, even, I can't even watch their stuff anymore because they give me secondhand spooky. It's tough out here. I need quiet via B streamers because I'm a naturally hyperactive person and they can help calm me down. Yeah, so there's a benefit to that. I already s said that you're a peaceful person to hang around, so like play into that. I feel like. Yeah, exactly. And like, um, I feel like part of being a performer, like what I said at Blaze's stream, is that it's easier for me to play a role that um it's easier to play a role when when there's like some truth mixed in and stuff it's easier to live a lie when there's a truth mixed in and i've pretty much embraced the fact that i'm the shit talking streamer but like i'm just changing how i i talk shit Yeah, I also look forward to watching Zippy streams. Because, like, I I don't want to come across as condescending with stuff. Because it's not, it's oft, it's not often that I genuinely shit on something. I feel like I tend to be more constructive. But then it's also hard to come across as constructive. Because of, like, my tone of voice and stuff. So I'm trying to adjust that a bit more. But, um...
So let's see, let me trace out the mouth. And, um, it's a wide smile. It goes beyond the pupils. Goes beyond the pupils. Yeah, Zivy is trying to get out of the house. Cause, um, is it okay for me to talk about it? I'll also send her Ko-Fi if anybody wants to contribute. Um, her bitch-ass grandma is a bitch-ass grandma, so she needs to get out the house. Like, that's the best way to describe it without going into great detail. Give me just a minute, I'll send the link. Because I, I still don't know how to do that command to allow the link. And I keep fucking it up. So I'll, I'll just send it. Yeah. Zivia is that very person. Let me pin that. Actually, can I delete that message? And write a new one? Okay, I'm going to send a new one. But pretty much, um, this semester, okay, it'll be pinned. Yeah. The reason why I don't want to get into detail, because sometimes whenever I talk about it, I go on a rant about how I will commit arson. So, um, so we're pretty much just doing double time to make sure that that does not result to that resort. To that. <laughs> but, um, and it's just a process with some things. The waiting period is always the worst period, but once I won't get got by Twitch, I'll be fine. But, um, I'll be fine. I believe in myself. I'll save the... I'll save... I'll say, hey, Vagrant! Thank you for the canvas save. But, um... I don't like the lips. What did I do? Not that much vagrant. We're talking about we're talking about a lot of stuff from um, personal struggles to Does he have two pairs of eyes under his eye? It's three. Okay. It's three. Okay. I gotta remember stuff because like I'll look straight at at a character sheet and then I'll forget like two things reason why I'm drawing the lips like this like whenever I color I don't actually have the top and bottom lines because I think it looks a hot mess whenever I do it but I have it as a guide so when I actually um when I actually like color it in I have a guide But um, we're talking about the state of art and why some people need to put the fucking pen down because they can only draw like three different things and yet they expect to be called a professional. And this is partially in response to the stuff that happened earlier today. For context, there was a VTuber, there was a black VTuber who was getting a model made and the person that she commissioned didn't draw her hair right. And 
even though she asked for an edit, the artist was like trying to have them pay for another edit, which I don't think should be allowed when you did it wrong. This isn't like when you already agreed on something and then the person changed their mind. You did it wrong. You should not be charging to fix a mistake that you did. Because that's in bad faith. At least to me. Maybe the eyes should be a little bit bigger. The second person didn't do that much better because they paid somebody else to um, edit it. But like, I'm half and half with that. I do not like the idea of paying another artist to edit somebody else's art because like that's very taboo. Do not edit. Like sometimes I even feel bad about um, people doing edits of like existing TV shows sometimes because like I don't I don't know. Remember when I talked about the thing about East Asians still being POC and somebody was just like I did a POC edit of an anime character. And it's an anime character who's Japanese. And it's just like. It's weird. I feel like we should be drawing fan art. For shows that actually bother. Because like to me. That is rude. But at the same time. I understand the commissioner's frustration. Because what's the point of me giving you money. And then. You're acting as if my features are too much of a chore to do correctly. Exactly. Because, like, here's my thing about it. To me, it shouldn't be as taboo with wanting to change a model. Because, to me, that's a commercial commission. And when it comes to commercial commissions, you already, like, bought all the rights to it. You can do whatever you want. Although I do have clauses that nobody's allowed to like put it through AI regardless if you have a commercial thing or not. Cause I'll stab a bitch. Like I will stab a bitch, but um if they if they fed it through like a generative AI machine. But like changing one part of the model is not a big deal to me. Same Donnie. Okay. So he sort of wants Damon, my client, he sort of wants it to be sort of like Sukuna with the eyes open like this. With Sukuna, it's a little bit different. It's my first time drawing a character with multiple eyes like that, so it's it'll be a doozy. Like to me, I feel like if you got a commercial commission, which what a VTuber model it like a commercial commission, you're making money off of it. I feel like you should be able to customize it to whatever needs that you have. But I also need like I need VTubers to look at the fucking portfolio and stop commissioning people who don't have a single Negro. I can't even just say a single Negro. Stop, stop commissioning folks who don't have a single, like any of your features, because it's not even just with black folks. It's with people of color in general. Cause I've seen South Asian VTubers deal with this. I've seen fat VTubers deal with this. I've seen, I don't see that many disabled VTubers. Honestly, it's hard out here. And that's where I went to the conversation before how it's just like, it's hard for me to find, it's hard to find a model artist because unfortunately a lot of model artists, a lot of model artists are racist as fuck. But when it comes to finding art in general, it should not be difficult. At least to me because I hang out in too many artist spaces where I can find an abundance of it and I'm seeing too many diverse artists who are literally one commission away from eviction and they can't find clientele because the clientele keeps looking to to dick right colorists and fat phobics and stuff and fat phobes and stuff I think the very nature of VTubing due to it being rooted in idol culture means that it's inherently discriminatory yeah due to it being rooted in idol culture 
and also because of Cool Japan. Because, like, uh, remember... Did I say in a stream that a lot of VTubers are damn spineless whenever it comes to social issues? Like, why is it that every time there's, like, um... Whenever there's, like, sexism or something, that, that gets labeled as drama? Or whenever people are, like... Whenever there's like a major social issue, right? And the most that folks can say is just be kind to people and stuff instead of actually taking a solid stance against discrimination. And then when you ask why, they're like, well, I don't want to be political and stuff. And it's just like, like the whole thing with Cool Japan. Oh, hey, Pass. I'm doing well. I'm working on a commission and we're talking about the state of art. And in my um, post, I made a reference to Andre Leon Talley. I made a reference to Andre Leon Talley because um, Andre Leon Talley, for those who don't know, he's a major fashion journalist and stuff. And he died, I think about two years ago. I think he died the same year that um Tara Mugler did and um for those who don't know about his work like a major example of his work is his his really large coats and his boater hats and um Rihanna actually did a tribute to him during her Super Bowl show with her large red coat that was a reference to him yeah some people sooner graduate than make a racism bad statement yeah and I think that's partially because of the nature of like Japanese entertainment because like for those who don't know I need VTubers because everybody and their mom keeps asking the same question like why why do people um frown upon talking about politics and stuff because like I hate the statement that being against racism isn't political that it's a humanity thing that's still politics guys Yeah, he should be getting retaliation and hate for the initial post because he literally admitted that he didn't look into the thing fully. And it's just like, why the hell do you think? Why did you feel the need to open your mouth when you didn't even have the full context? Like, why couldn't you have waited till everybody said what they needed to say? Or why couldn't you have read the whole thing before opening your mouth? I'm so tired. Like, and it's just like, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't yell at people for not knowing things. And it's just like, I don't yell at people for not knowing things. I yell at people who don't know things and yet they feel like their opinion matters in this situation. No, the fuck it doesn't. Like, shut up. And this is coming from somebody who talks a lot of shit. Like, shut up. <laughs> Like, he was a part of the problem. Everybody was just like, oh, I was just, I was just mad at the commissioner and stuff. And I feel like people need to stop coddling artists, which is why I say that some people need to put the fucking pin down. Like, I'm at this point where, like, people are like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to gatekeep art. And da 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 da. But it's just like, the, the issue isn't that art isn't accessible the problem is that i feel like the title of artist is a little bit too accessible because you got people who who do nothing but like copy without the original context of the thing that they're copying they and by that, I mean, like, derivative content. Like, you know how everybody and their mom keeps putting the Akira slide into films? And in almost every movie that makes a reference to the Akira slide, it barely even has the same payoff as the original Akira slide. Like, it's like what Miyazaki said about how... How, um... He didn't say necessarily that anime was a mistake. He specifically said that the mainstreamification of of anime was a mistake because like now 
um, there's going to be more emphasis on mass producing to fit a profit motive and a lot of the people who make anime are motherfuckers who don't go outside so it's like what experiences do they have to draw from in order to make their stories and then they end up copying off of stuff that's already popular without the context of what's being copied and that's where you get a lot of derivative lowbrow stuff like look at the isekai genre that genre actually has a decent concept and there are some bangers and stuff like i never watched the devil is a part-timer but it's like a reverse isekai yes use an anime as a storytelling medium but like isekai has largely become a genre for folks who get no bitches and stack no paper i will never forget i will never forget that one twitter post who was just like what do you think this category of anime is he was just like shows for folks who get no bitches and stack no paper because it is Like, we are in a famine of art. We're in a famine of beauty right now. Like, remember when Isekai used to be good? What happened to Coraline? What happened to Alice in Wonderland? That's the good shit. I might have to make the eyes smaller. I'll make this eye smaller. Cuz like I know that it's smaller but also my style. So I'll I'll ask. This is a sketch. I'll ask. Well, I'm making a joke. Um I'm making a joke pass because like um like traditional isekai as in the anime, yes it happened in like the 80s and 90s i was just saying stuff like alice in wonderland alice in wonderland is like victorian isekai because like it's literally going into another world to be honest i don't even mind the protagonist being cool i feel like there are more lame protagonists like the pro most of isekai protagonists aren't even cool it's just that people happen to like them despite them not being cool and not having any redeeming qualities Like, when I say that it's for people who stack no paper and get no bitches, I'm so serious. Because, like, the protagonist is literally the same way. There's no reason why this dude should be getting as many women on his shoulder, on his arm, as he should. But yet, he has it anyway for literally just existing. He is just a blank slate for losers to project themselves onto. And that would require him to be a loser again. Because, like, okay, t let's talk about somebody like Tengen from demon slayer right he's somebody who actually deserves three wives because he looks cool he's a really good fighter although he's shitty around kids and to me that's a that's a deal breaker like he's shitty around kids but he has drip he has resources and he's genuinely good to his wives that's somebody who deserves to have a harem most isekai protagonists, they have no drip. They just got the same boring ass brown haircut. They're shitty around everyone, not just kids. Because half the time they be misogynistic as crap. Yeah. Well, cool in the sense that being isekai is how they become cool. They're cool because they're a loser compared to all of the other extraordinary people that live in the isekai world. He's so lame, but that makes him different from the rest of us. So that makes him cool. I cry. I should make the mouth a little bit smaller. Like I made it wide. You're not like other boys, you're worth exactly. Like, oh my gosh. It's ass out here. But no, I need I need VTubers to learn what the hell cool Japan is because that'll literally answer your questions. 
Like, why, why are VTubers... Why are VTubers so spineless when talking about social issues, Cool Japan? I used to watch Giga. Honestly! I've actually considered making a damn infographic about it. Because people keep asking me what that is, and I'm like, y'all keep asking the same damn questions, and that's the answer. That is the foundation. So for those who don't know, Cool Japan was a policy launched. He got an earring on. Actually, I'll wait to draw that. I gotta make sure that the face is down. Um, cool Japan was an initiative launched um, after World War II. Essentially, the Japanese government was um, trying to reform Japan's image because um, a lot of people forget because of cool Japan that Japan was wilding out during that time like people forget that they were allied with the Nazis for the reason for a reason because they were one in the fucking same they were literally just yeah after World War II and pretty much the initiative was to use stuff like entertainment, um, use entertainment, commerce, and tourism in order to distract people from the war crimes that they committed. And it's been fucking successful because, like, oh my gosh, like, the closest thing that we've gotten to reminding the general public about how bad Japan was and I also think that not just cool Japan but also the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki because like because like the US was wrong for doing that because it was attacking civilians and stuff and it was such a devastating display of violence that people like sort of forgot unless you were like Korean or China because they never forgot Koreans straight up showed up to Oppenheimer and was clapping during the bombing scene <laughs> like they are mad as they should be Um, it technically wasn't with the help of the U.S. The U.S. technically was not helping. We were benefiting from the rebuilding. Like, yes, they were rebuilding infrastructure and stuff, but it was largely like a cover-up operation by using entertainment, commerce, as in like trading and stuff, and um, tourism to distract people. Actually, I should have kept it wide. It's fine. I believe in myself. I can't even say American because like America we don't distract from our problems we're open about our problems I feel like we're too open about our problems because even when other countries are shit they always use us as an example of like how terrible we are and it kind of pisses me off because I need Canadians to get yelled at more and I need South Americans in general to get yelled at more there's been so much anti-blackness going on and I feel like and then I definitely need Europeans to get yelled at. Y'all literally... I'm sorry, not sorry to any... No, Artemis, you're one of the good... Let me, let me stop. No, Artemis, you will be spared. You will be spared in the war of nationalism. Like, I'm not a patriot, but when it comes to other countries trying to tell us what America is and stuff, especially if they're like a European... That's when the bald eagle starts screeching because it's just like, bitch, shut up. We literally exist because y'all always export your problems to other places and then make it everybody else's problem. It was just like, like I do not want to hear a British person talk about how racist the U.S. is. Pass. Thank you. <laughs> These are people who think that drama is a It was definitely not necessary. It was literally one of the worst displays of um, inhumane action in history. But it's also bad because it allowed Japan to literally use that as a distraction against their own BS. 
Like, oh my god. Like, J Japan has managed to use that to weaponize their victimhood in order to distract from the fact that they literally did just as terrible stuff to other countries. What was I about to say again? Oh yeah, how the closest thing to, like, media acknowledging the BS for mainstream media specifically to acknowledge the BS that Japan did during that time was Avatar The Last Airbender. Because, like, even though the Fire Nation aesthetics are based off of like Malaysian and Chinese culture the way that it's military is set up it's very much based off of Japan it's literally a set of islands my model is working um it's the fire nation is a set of islands that it that recently went through an industrial revolution and is using their newfound power to dominate neighbors on the mainland and also they committed genocide that that is very much what japan at least was trying to do during that time period and it's honestly pretty cool that um it's actually pretty cool that a mainstream media was like brave enough to to commentate on that also thanks for the for the clothing redeem i'm gonna add some more in april i remember the crimes japan did to the chinese the koreans southeast asians during world war ii to this day yep yup actually i think that a previous prime minister has it definitely wasn't shinzo abe it definitely wasn't that bastard because he was literally making fun of comfort girls and stuff. And speaking of comfort girls. Like I always think about Hitalia. And how it's banned in both Koreas. And it's just like do you know how badly you gotta fuck up. For both Koreas to agree on something against you. Because like their depiction of Korea was making fun of comfort girls. Um, comfort girls were girls that were like forced to. Um forced to entertain the soldiers that's the nicest way to put it you know how terrible you gotta be to make both Koreas dislike you and agree that you gotta go but oh my gosh Yeah, half sex. I actually made a reference to that. I made a um I made I did a report in my biology class because we had to do um we had to do a prediction about the birth rates in other countries, right? And I picked Japan. Like I was the first one who yelled, Japan. So it was just like you seem very eager to talk about this and I'm like, Yes, because I love shitting on the Japanese government. Cause like it's literally their fault. Like, y'all want to know why Japan is having such a hard time making babies and stuff? It's literally because it's due to a combination of factors, but one of the largest things is, like, decades of eugenics. Like, they didn't stop sterilizing disabled people until, like, the 2000s. Oh, I'm sorry, Zivia, for triggering your Hitalia PTSD. I don't want to let people forget. Because I used to be hella into Hitalia, like... Hitalia was what got me more so into history, unfortunately. Unfortunately. And then Helsin got me into, like, it's sad. At least I didn't go through, like, the right winger arc of being into World War II. It took Hitalia and Helsin Ultimate for me to be really into World War II. Yeah, and then um, women are actually going on a birth strike because of that. They are trying to do better with certain things, though. Like, for example, um, literally, like, fall, late fall of last year, they are trying to do, um, they're trying to advance 
their LGBT policies. Now, if you're a trans person, if you want to get like your name changed or your pronouns changed on paperwork, you no longer have to be sterilized to get that happen. Um... They're also making it easier for LGBT for making LGBT parents to adopt because um, by expanding the definition of what family is, then more people can make families, right? And then they're also they also recently ruled anti marriage laws as unconstitutional. No, it is not the same as legalizing, but it's a first step. I remember my mom she says she saw a video about a Japanese and Korean older woman Japanese lady wanted to apologize for what her country has done to the Korean lady and her people but the Korean lady said we can't forget what we've done in the past but we can do is move forward and make better decisions yes and also acknowledge those past decisions because that's really it I'm already making notes with this um To be honest, we can say that about people in any country. We can honestly say that about any country. Because, like, I don't want to single Japan out. And this isn't to, like, um, be like, oh, I don't want to make any... Ex I definitely don't want to make any excuses. But, like, um... Fuck, you draw this horn. I gotta change the scaling. Don't you stop them, baby. Don't you dare. Actually, I should do the hairline first. I should do the hairline first. That helps. Because I have something to reference. But yeah, um, when you have like centuries of isolation and also like Japan was literally taking a book out of Nazi Germany and stuff during... To be honest, they were already, like, the Japanese government was already instilling narratives of superiority and stuff even before World War II. Like, the Meiji Nest Restoration, I think that was when they opened the borders and stuff. Yeah, I know, I said the birthing strike. It's called a birthing strike. They're also not just doing it because of the misogyny, but also because it's too expensive to have children. I feel like people are like, oh, it's okay that the birth rates are going down. It actually isn't dependent on the context, right? Like, I, I think people need to realize that being priced out of having children is actually a bad thing. Because poor people are literally forced to have kids in order to refl replenish the workforce. And yet we're expected, at the same time, we're expected not to have kids when we don't have resources, even though they make all of those resources inaccessible. Like, robbing people of the choice to have kids because of their finances when you should be making childcare accessible, whether that's through food, whether that's through making it so people don't have to work just to live so they can actually have time for their families and stuff that's bad I'm gonna have to change the scale of everything yeah the face feels too like the actual face parts they feel too big I need to balance especially with the way that the hairline is um because there's nothing wrong with not having kids, but like, because the co the conditions are coercive. Shit, I'm not having kids. I got PCOS and I can't even take care of myself. But like, that's the problem, right? I don't have accessible health care to get rid of my PCOS. And I don't have money to take care of myself. But, um... But yeah, Cool Japan is shit. Now you know about the different atrocities that they committed 
and what's constantly being forgotten because anime anime fun and um now every time you see some bs going on in vtubing and you wonder why people are like too much of a baby back bitch to talk about it know that it is an extension of these material conditions and i say baby back bitch because like it's it's really cowardly nobody is telling you to give political commentary on streams yeah i do believe that a major part of why there aren't any people yeah the economy is bad and wage no it's fine I, I pretty much scrolled through it um the economy is bad wages aren't getting better and also like and also like the divorce rates are high because um we need to we need to talk about dudes and how the standard for them is kind of shit and by kind of i mean really shit to the point where a lot of people do not want to be around them I do hate the focus on the male loneliness endemic because like it's forgetting a lot of major factors because it's not just because of male behavior. The number one reason why there's a loneliness endemic is because a bunch of people died through COVID. You have already lost so many of your friends because of the pandemic. That is the number one reason why you are lonely. The second reason why loneliness is so rampant is because, you know, everybody and their mom keeps telling women to choose better. So we did. And now men got to step their pussies up to actually get some. Like, the bar is no longer in hell. Especially now that th this is why there's so many policies that are going towards, like, trying to take away resources from women, whether that's reproductive rights, affirmative action, to actually let women or particularly white women because honestly they're the ones who benefited the most to have a better job chance at getting a job and stuff because when we have a job we have money and when we have money it's easier for us to leave shitty relationships yes and no because you're we're starting to see a lot more people getting roommates and stuff to pay rent it's actually um from a gender analysis when it comes to straight marriages particularly, it's financially beneficial for a man to get married. It's not so for a woman to get married. Like when a man gets married, he actually gets a social boost and they tend to get promoted more often because what bosses look at when you're married is just like, oh, this dude must be well adjusted and stuff for somebody to want to be with him permanently and stuff and it actually makes you more marketable as a man if you are like a family person and stuff because it shows that you have a sense of responsibility you can cooperate with others you can lead da 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 da, -da. girl bosses are doing semi fine and i say semi fine damn it i forgot to turn the the symmetry back on i'm going to cry They're doing semi-fine because, like, the fact that women have to choose between families and a career, it's still ass. Because, like, um, if you are, like, a single mother or you're a mother in any capacity, your um, opportunities go down. Because, like, they'll... They won't deny a job for a man to get a job because like they automatically assume that he's going to take care of the finances and that his wife is going to take care of the f household stuff so because they assume that the woman is going to do the household stuff it was just like how can we hire you if you can't devote your entire life to the job when you have children and stuff single women are thriving in the workforce because we have no other obligations but to ourselves And, like, I feel like that's a bad thing when it's just single women having access to this. Because, like I said, it's it's coercion. The fact that people have to choose between their career and wanting to build a family. When mothers should not have to 
be told that their life is pretty much over just because they have kids women shouldn't be forced into having kids nor should they um be pushed out of having kids The whole thing you gotta choose better is literally what our parents have been telling us to do. So we're doing it. And we're choosing not to be bothered. Isn't it great? So. The birth rates are largely low because it's like financially hard. And also because like patriarchy is making familyhood undesirable. Because why would we want to build families? With folks who have made it clear that they do not see us as people and stuff. And we're doing this not out of not just out of self preservation, but also out of preservation of future kids. Because being growing up in those environments are really harmful, you know? It's not great. But um I wanna get back on the state of art because holy shit, I feel like we need to bring back I don't say that we should bring back art shame because that time period of like deviant art and solar sands how this dude this grown-ass man would like bring up pages of children to humiliate them for their lack of skills even though they're literally just learning and stuff that was a terrible time period that was a terrible time period and i feel like that is um influence the artists of today to the point where they can't take any criticism because they associate all criticism with ridicule instead of like an actual desire to want to see them reach their potential and do better because it's gotten to a point where time period like about the 2010s the 2010s was just shit all around but like this is like during the time where folks would like get art from random people's account and react to it on YouTube and talk about how garbage it was. And it's just like, these are kids. And like, I especially hate it in fan fiction spaces because like, you got folks on archive of our own who are like, oh, we're making free art and stuff and you shouldn't have anything to say about it because I'm doing labor for free. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You have no paragraph spaces. How do you expect me to read your stuff? Like, I draw the line when it comes to writing and it's not that I'm being more harsh with writing than I am with visual art because to be honest I'm harsh with both but like it's still about being awful to people like rage content is still at all time high they've just shifted now they just complain about movies for having a character that isn't white in there and go on a woke tirade now it's it's still personal but it's like a different kind of personal like they shift mediums they shifted mediums to make fun of but um i don't know i i kind of dislike the entitlement of fan fiction writers when most of the time people are just asking for like decent grammar and paragraph spaces and to stop writing run-on sentences because that's usually my complaint Aside from the complaint that Archive of Our Own needs to fall because they should not be allowing some of the content that they do in the name of the creative. Ex I don't give a fuck about freedom of expression when it comes to certain things. I don't think that your, your quote unquote right to create should override the safety of marginalized groups. Like, I'm pro-censorship when it's done at the will of a community, not done at the will of a state or a corporation, because I shit on state and corporations, on states and corporations censoring. But, like, when a bunch of black people are telling you that they are uncomfortable with race play being a very popular tag in a fandom, maybe you should listen to them. Like, I don't know. But, um... This is why I'm praying for Archive of Our Own's downfall, and I'm so ready for Inkblot to art to launch the um, literature section. I'm literally going to transfer all of my stuff. Speaking of fan fiction, I'm writing uh, Jujutsu Kaisen fan fiction right now, and I'm struggling. If y'all, if any of y'all know like any tutorials on how to write fight scenes, please, please email me or something like. Please, I'm, I'm struggling because that I literally have outlines of future chapters. There's a new fan fiction site, sorta. Um, Inkblot 
is more like a a better deviant art because they actually care about minorities and they care about artists in general and I need people to get on the damn site and to actually use it like don't just make a damn profile actually use the site and also send them a dollar sometimes because it's community funded just like Wikipedia and archive of our own You gotta read fight scenes to understand. The problem is, most of the fight scenes that I read deal with melee weapons. I'm writing stuff with powers in it. Ink blot. I'll type it. And like, I like ink blot because it has a really good TOS. Um, they're very minority friendly, and they're also pro NSFW but they also like moderate it well because I'm very I'm very strict when it comes to that like I've been looking into stuff like um sexual expression and whatnot ever since the porn ban that happened in October 2018 on Tumblr and I feel like more people need to like do research with that because they're like oh Tumblr is just being a bunch of sticklers and stuff no the fuck they're not the reason why um, it was an eraser thing. I was just like, why aren't any marks being made? I waited for Glaze to give me access to their site before posting art outside of IG. True. I want Nightshade. Because to be honest, I kind of don't like Glaze because it makes everything look crunchy. And I know why it's a necessity, but nah. I, I, I'd rather just poison the data set so they still can't use my shit. Like, I could describe what's going on, but, like, I don't know. I, I just gotta try. I gotta, I gotta watch the scenes again. I gotta watch fight scenes. I gotta read fight scenes with Storm in it. Because my character is... My character is pretty much another black hero with lightning powers. Rest in peace. Like, I cry. It's not delivery, it's the struggle. Not the ad. Not the ads. Rest in peace. Okay, I'll do both. Another thing you can do with writing fight scenes. So having um, exclamation points in order to emphasize certain stuff. I could try that. I should try that. I'll try that. Because like, oh my god, the story literally cannot move forward until I have my character punching Gojo in the face because he was talking shit. Like, I literally made a GGK, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen OC just to say that I can make a character that can fight Gojo. Like, be on par with him. And I did. Because I am immaculate. Is everybody back now? I 
Okay, everybody's back now. Yay. Okay. But, um... I feel like one of the easiest ways... I feel like a JJK OC is actually pretty simple because, like, their superpower could be literally anything. I just pray that, um... I pray that you actually, like, give your character limitations because, like, I'm so tired of people making OC... Put... When you make superpowers, have some trade-offs to it. Give them some limitations so they can work around it. Like, please. Like, making making an all-powerful character is fun in middle school, but I feel like if they could solve every problem... Like, at least with Superman, even though dude is, like, hella powerful... His social life kind of sucks because at least during the during the Silver Age, that dude was hella strong. Like he was just doing godly shit. He might as well have been Jesus, which is bad because like Superman is supposed to be a Moses allegory, not a Jesus allegory. But like during the Silver Age, he had all sorts of crazy stuff going on. But you know something that he will always fail at? Get it with Lois. That man got cuckolded so many times. That's why I love Yu Yu Hashigo and Hunter x Hunter. I don't know what I do, but to be honest, I probably give them a heavenly restriction. Is if you're on here, but a little out of it. Oh, I'm sorry. To be honest, we were talking about some heavy shit. Which is partially why I shifted to the fan fiction thing. But no, I'm like, I'm, I'm begging, I'm begging fan fiction writers to do the bare minimum of putting a paragraph space and stuff. Because it's just like, why doesn't anybody read my fic and give me kudos? And I'm like, maybe because they can't read because you don't have paragraph spaces or you use run-on sentences and stuff and then i also dislike whenever people like what if english isn't somebody's first language and you shouldn't be criticizing it i feel like you should be criticizing it because english isn't their first language so they can actually learn and get better right it's just how you do it don't be rude about it and don't make fun of the person for like being foreign or whatever but please tell them about their writing and how to improve to be more legible. Okay, then stop watching the videos, Ivy. Also, I guess, to be honest, when it comes to art improvement videos, I'm like half and half with them. You do have a general goal of what you want to improve on, which largely does with anatomy and stuff. And I guess you need to be specific in your search, like what kind of, cause like, yeah, there's art improvement videos and they do a sort of do and don't, but like that's only, that only works for like specific goals and stuff. I, I need to find some art improvement videos cause I used to watch a few, how there were some artists that like put an emphasis on it's not about practicing but how you practice yeah art books tend to be better um what you need to get are the morpho books like you know those books those black and white books that show like muscle breakdown and fat people and more muscle breakdown and stuff get those because apparently those are like the bible of anatomy Superman stories can be really good. Like, All-Star Superman is pretty good. When a man does for humanity. Also, that one time. Yeah. When they did the radio show where he was beating up the KKK. Yep. It's trending again. The com That comic, specific comic, is trending again. Because, like, there was some right-winger who was just like, Oh my gosh. Pro-Palestinians are drawing their favorite fictional characters. Um, supporting Palestine and stuff. Is this some new Gen Z thing? And I'm like, nigga, we've, we've been drawing fictional characters doing that. And then what got on my nerves was how he, like, had Jesus there. And then here come the Reddit atheists be like, yeah, Jesus was fictional. And it's just like, how do you know? This is how you know that people don't know about history. It is actually a universal fact in history spaces that Jesus Christ was a real person. The only thing that is up to date is whether or not he is the son of God. But there is substantial proof 
that Jesus was real because like he's literally the reason why so many other people were named Jesus at the time because it ended up becoming a popular name because he was literally an enemy of the state and was executed and shit. Most anatomy 20 hours to an hour long. Um, yeah, you may have to look for like maybe specific parts or I guess watch the whole video, but only do it in sections or yeah, they're usually a Redditor and you know what? I've been seeing them pop out like out of the sewer gates a lot more ever since has been came out because people were critiquing has been for how hoodoo well not hoodoo voodoo well how voodoo is depicted and then folks are like so you're saying that we shouldn't critique religions it is just like no we're saying that you shouldn't be using cultures without context for profit well yeah but it's just like yeah jesus was fake he was just like no he wasn't the debate is whether or not he was actually like supernatural and stuff but like most historians are just like yeah jesus was real this dude did too much stuff like he he caused too much of a ruckus during the roman empire for people to not think that he's real we just don't know if he's actually like magic or not and usually the academic consensus is like no because like a lot of um i feel I'm pretty sure that a lot of like historians and stuff are usually atheists or agnostic. Actually, no, there's more agnostic folks in a lot of anthropolo anthropolo yeah, anthropology spaces and stuff. But, um, but no, it's just like, it was just like, so you're saying that we shouldn't critique powerful religions and stuff, and I'm like, like you shouldn't it's not that it's more like you shouldn't be reducing pagan beliefs to like barbarism and satanism because that literally kills people and if you really cared about defying religious authority then you should be at advocating for like education and accurate depictions of certain stuff like i don't know Maybe because I actually believe in cu being culturally respectful and also because of my interest in anthropology and stuff, I try to be respectful when it comes to certain depictions and stuff. And also, like, I come from a pluralistic family. Pluralism refers to um, communities with multiple... Oh, you could definitely find some pirated shit of Morpho. I'll find it. But, um... But no, I come from a pluralistic family, which ref refers to communities of multiple different backgrounds and stuff coexisting. Yeah, it's a neutral magic. But, like, the main issue, right... At least the two main issues that I see is that they're using VEVs in the imagery. And VEVs are really taboo to use in general. Because, like, it, it's a powerful symbol. And, like, it's legit dangerous to use. And stuff, and, like, using it trivially comes across as, like, very um, unserious. And then the other thing is that Alistair is literally a certain a servant of hell and historically speaking the association with voodoo and just pagan practices in general with um yeah Christo nationalism is ass um it's Europeans fault why a lot of different because it's not just restrictive to Christianity because one can argue that the corruption that's heavy in Islam is largely due to Western influence through destabilization because like people forget that um, Muslim countries like Iran and stuff women could wear pants women could walk around without a hijab women could drive motorcycles in Iran before Western influence but due to that destabilization patriarchs were able to take up power in the chaos 
and shift most of the rules of society to what it looks like now. Like, I feel like a lot of people underestimate how much of an influence white supremacy has had on the globe. I need to bring down the hairline a little bit. And how it's messed up so much stuff. And it's not as simple as, oh, I'm just critiquing beliefs and stuff. It's just like, sir, you grew up in fucking Protestant Alabama around Pentecostals. That is not the same. That is not the same as Tone Tone cutting up chickens in his yard in order to speak to the Orishas. That, that is not the same. You need to focus on that. You need to focus on you. Well, yeah. But I blame Europeans more so. It's not necessarily that I don't want to shit on the U.S. Because, like... Yeah, out of context, voodoo is just a magic system. And then they think that critiquing it is the same as critiquing Christianity when no the hell it isn't. And like, um, some voodoo communities do have issues, but I feel like it's more like just general black people issues, like patriarchy, general black people issues. Um, sometimes there is some crossover between Christian critique and voodoo critique because voodoo takes heavy inspiration well not heavy inspiration it is largely influenced by Catholicism like Orisha is more present in practices like condomble and stuff but voodoo actually has saints and that's mainly because with the history of the religion it's actually a combination of West African traditions and Catholicism and stuff there is some crossover but it's, it's still not the fucking same shout out Barry B. Benson and then I also frown against the Americans thing because usually whenever people say Americans they always mean the US and it's just like no Canada was a part of this shit I'm sorry Artemis <laughs> but like I'm dogging on your country right because your country does not get enough shit <laughs> There was one time I actually got into an argument with a Canadian and stuff and I was talking about anti-blackness and he was just like, we don't have that over here. And I'm like, your prime minister literally did blackface. Y'all literally had a herd of truckers trying to pull their own version of January 6th because Canada is pretty much just the US but French. It was just like, why is it that other people outside of the country are telling us, but we never see it? And I'm like, are you white? And he was just like, yeah. And I'm like, exactly. Shut up. People outside of the U.S. have to tell you about yourselves because you don't listen to the people of color around you, South America. I can't remember what day it was. There was like a week. When a lot of South Americans were showing their ass. What was it? It was during the, um... African Americans have a flag. Yeah. The Blood Meridian. Yeah. To be honest, America was already fucked when it came to Christianity. Because, like, the first Christians to come over here were literally folks that were considered so weird that they got kicked out of Europe and they were pretty much finding refuge over here like you know about the Quakers and stuff it was them it was those guys like we were already set up to lose because the first Christians that came over here were fucking weirdos cause Quakers and the Puritans crazy and then the final nail in the coffin it was both the Quakers and the Puritans like they didn't like either of them and then the final nail in the coffin was fucking Mormons I don't think that Mormons should be considered Christian they have their own book the thing about the Salem witch trials though is that it really wasn't a Christian movement though I think that people need to remember that the Salem witch trials was mostly land disputes like which was just an allegory for I want your land 
because it, it was pretty much them cons um, doing insurance fraud and shit. Oh, I've never seen that one. Send it to me. Oh yeah, the Salem Witch Trials was also largely racism. Because people of color suffered the most through it. Now that part was the Christian part because of the religious persecution of pagan practices, but um... Most of it was like land disputes. I'm gonna accuse you of being a witch so I could get your shit. It would, and I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how to fix that. Just send me in DM. <laughs> Because I keep forgetting the command to allow. I need to write it down. And even when I do put the command, it doesn't work for some reason. I'm going to find a way. I'm so sorry. I'm incompetent. I need like one mod to do things for me so I don't have to think as hard. Because even though... Okay, Blaze literally taught me how to use Notion. Because I saw a video of hers of making it. And I literally made a database of commands only to still put shit in wrong. Like I got to... I gotta pick a day. It's tough. It's tough out here. It ain't easy being cheesy. Yeah, everybody and their mom says that. It's not just them. Pass. Pass. I know. I know. I know. I also remember the Gandhi quote about it. I know. I was there. I wasn't there, but I was there. It is a shame how, um... I don't want to be mean, but also it's Black History Month. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something about white people and ruining things. We gotta do something. <laughs> oh, it, it's crazy out here. Cause like there, there's so much good shit and it's sad because there's like a lot of great things that white people are capable of. Like I trust white people when it comes to desserts and they make some really good catchphrases like G willikers and shit. Like they're capable of greatness. We just got to get rid of the nationalism and shit and they can reach their full potential. Yep, and that goes back to my original conversation about how black people's over rep. G Willikers is peak. Like, oh, I've seen that. It's been so long. Or at least it feels familiar. It's isn't it weird that I work in a fucking Black History Museum? I don't know this shit. But maybe because the Black History Museum is like state specific. Like my the museum that I work at is like specific to my state. I know G Willikers will all be damned because I think they also um, invented that. Oh my stars and garters. Exactly. Like stop being what you not and thrive with what you know. Except for artists, they need to branch the fuck out. Yeah, it's a little bit nicer than the Pan-African flag. Well, it's not necessarily that. The problem with Pan-Africanism is that um, people misinterpret it. Pan-Africanism is mainly about solidarity against white supremacy. That's what it's supposed to be. You cannot be like, we're all one continent because we're not all one fucking continent. Shit, not even people within their own countries are united or like treat themselves as one unified identity because of the different tribal history and stuff. And that's largely due to white supremacy um, 
playing build a border and lumping groups together because they don't care about the will of the actual people that live there and stuff there's a lot of animosity with that but also like there are Africans that got sense and don't crap on diaspora because they know they don't have a leg to stand on because I got some cousins in in Ghana and Nigeria and stuff through marriage and a lot of them they will go off about stuff because like some of them have enough sense to know that um the beef between diaspora and Africans is like a distraction yeah Eureka honest to Betsy egad like it's phenomenal Come on, white people. Now, when it comes to art, though, I do need white people to, to branch the fuck out. This goes back to the um original original conversation about how we are starving. We're in a in a famine of beauty right now because we got artists that don't want to. The puff needs to be bigger. We got artists that only want to draw one thing but have the nerve to call themselves character designers the fuck I put them on the same layer I put them on the same layer I'm gonna cry thank god this is a sketch they want to be treated as professionals but they only draw one thing and kind of find out their art teacher was right that they will never be a real art like I'll, I'll straight up tell somebody that they're not a real artist and their art teacher was right and they should put the pen down because I'm tired I'm tired of racists getting like a smack on like um patted on the back for being racist and being like you should be um respectful of people's wishes and stuff you shouldn't be taking people's fucking money and then not trying to draw them correctly or you'll be a dirty bastard who'll only draw these features when you get paid But also, I'm tired of clients. I'm tired of clients with some things. Stop paying people who don't have a single person with your features in their portfolio. It, it goes both ways. I don't want to victim blame, but I also need art buyers to have some fucking sense. I know that common sense isn't common. So this is why I'm saying what I'm saying. Look in the damn portfolio and stop dick writing art just because somebody has the ability to draw doesn't mean that they have a variety of subject matter and y'all need to stop begging for like proximity to people who don't like you because that's how you keep setting yourself up for failure and that's why you're like 15 shades lighter than you are or that's why you're drawn like a stick even though you're built more like Lizzo Or that's why they use the hospital wheelchair instead of a proper, like, mobile wheelchair. Yes and no. Um, so, when it comes to the dislike of anime art, it, it's a coin flip because some art teachers are very Eurocentric. And they shit on anime because it's foreign media. And then there are some other artists that consider cartoons to be lowbrow. Because if anybody knows the history of cartoons. Cartoons were really just shit posts That were mainly done to like crap on the government and stuff. And then eventually even even if we didn't look at like Disney taking over. And, lab and inadvertently um, causing the widespread perception that animation is for children. Um a lot of cartoons were used as advertisements that's why you see like family shows like the Flintstones and stuff having cigarette commercials literally in the middle of it and whatnot so like some art teachers are very rigid in it but there are other art teachers who are willing to support anime art especially since like manga artists have been displayed in the Louvre not just manga artists but um comic artists in general because like literally the Louvre except comic strip art was a major exhibition in like 2012 and Hirohiko Araki and what's the name of the author who made Tintin they were two of the major um artists who were displayed in there what else did I need to draw I need to put wings in there I forgot to download the wing buttons I need to I need to get wings let me save 
because um it was something else that i was talking about because like we were in adjacent conversations and i have this thing where if something is is like a little bit related to the topic that i'm talking about then i end up switching and then i end up forgetting but now i remember um i was talking about how art style can really help to further support a narrative and two major examples that i want to give are um which had atelier and berserk both are quote-unquote fantasy art styles or at least they're art styles that clearly take inspiration from like medieval artwork and it actually helps to sell the vibe of the narrative because like which had atelier it's a shoujo so it definitely has like the thin lines and the delicate details and stuff but specifically it looks sort of like the hatching style and the grain of the pen work it kind of gives the vibes of illuminated manuscripts as if it's like a older stair as if it's like an older storybook and stuff and that kind of helps with the fantastical vibes of it better hurry up and read witch hat they're supposed to get adapted i'm so i'm so ready i'm happy that we're having a shoujo revival because i'm tired of shonen i love shonen Um, that requires people to actually put it out there. You need to start sharing. Share the flag. Let people know. I gotta stop with some of my comments. Because, like, there was this one quote that I thought of. Because I think it was... I think it was cause Not just share it with me, but, like, put it out. Oh, you put it out in a... Okay, you linked the wiki, too. Gotcha. Because, like, I think about... Remember when Cosmo just be finding out really racist shit? And there was, like, this slave owner who came up... Who had this quote that was just like the easiest way to hide freedom from a black man is to put it in a book and then it just reminds me of this one of this one youtube clip where it's like read a book nigga <laughs> like not a sports page not a magazine like and it's not just black people because like i'm so tired of us being the faces of illiteracy and then we see the same ignorance from like literal other races every other fucking week, especially when it comes to black people. Like everybody's been showing their ass this month. I'm so tired. I'm bored. Shout out Michiko and Hachin. I still gotta finish it. I still haven't finished it. I still haven't finished it because like, okay, I got so frustrated because every other episode had a badass kid who I wanted to knock the shit out of. And it was like hard for me to tolerate what was going on. I gotta go back. When they play one on one in six and no, I haven't finished it. I start things and I forget. I have depression. Like sometimes it's gotten to a point where some shit I can't even finish unless I binge it. Cause like I don't like watch. I don't like binging things. I don't like binging things. Um, I, you feel empty afterwards and it's like I hate how binging if y'all don't know what I'm doing I'm looking for wing assets cause I can't I can't draw wings I will literally get um, a 3D model and trace over that shit and I'll be honest about it but I know where to find it so I'm good Is it a 3D model? So I have to use distortion in order to I can't do that I need a 3d model Now what fair part of why I use one piece as a sort of filler in between chapters of other series yeah, and seeing Michiko. Michiko is phenomenal. And it's a funny show. I'm just tired of these badass kids. Oh, 
Okay, let's try this. We're gonna experiment. But, um, I don't like binging. Um, we need to bring back weekly releases so that people can be able to experience things en masse at the same time as a community because that creates more longevity for the fucking series. And it, act it actually helps with ratings. It's like, like, I'm pretty much convinced that none of these streaming companies want stuff to succeed. They actually want it to fail so they can write it off as a tax write-off. So they don't have to spend any more money. Is that a brush? It's a brush. That was a 3D model. We're gonna pray. I love this song so much. This song kind of makes me cry a little bit. Okay. So what Damon wanted was for me to have the wings behind his head. Because, like, he has how many pairs of wings? Oh, I'm using the wrong kind of wings anyways. Shit, I gotta contact him. Because that's the back view. What does the front view look like? Or does he have a front view? If not, I'll improvise. What he wants are his wings. Like, his bat. Did the bat wings have feathers on them? Or are they supposed to be like, are they a hybrid or are they bird wings that are like molting? Huh. Wait, no, it wouldn't be bird wings that are molting because that's not what chicken wings look like. So it's like a hybrid. It's really cool. Like every time I look at reference sheets, I'm like, this is interesting. Cause like I look at the character sheet and like I look at things but I don't sometimes I don't give things a second thought I'm like this is cool I like the silhouette the colors are cool you can never go wrong with red white and black and then I just leave it at that but then when I'm actually drawing and I'm getting a decent look at things it's just like holy shit like I remember when I was drawing Yami Umai and I was high key having a hard time because um Here's a tip for people who make character sheets. If you're going to put rendering on it, please put a flat version of the color on the side. Preferably, you don't do rendering for it. Actually, no. No. It's actually not bad to do rendering. If you're, like, making a reference for a 3D model, then it's actually good to do rendering and then have swatches of what textures you're using so they know what textile to make it look like, right? But if you do put rendering on it, please have a flat version of the palette on the side. Because, like, if you're trying to draw that character in different types of lighting, the, the colors that are used in the rendered version are not going to cut it because it's in a specific type of lightning. You have flat colors so that people can go back and edit for whatever lighting they need, you know? That Spider-Man game commercial. Yeah, I love that. That was so cool. I hate capitalism. Because, like, ads can be really cool. And make you want to do stuff. And even though, like, you know, that's, like, manipulative and shit. At least there was, like, an artistry to the manipulation. Now companies, they don't even try. They're like, you'll show up anyways. Because we bought so out so much competition that you have no choice. Or we've hit a... Re We've hit a point of prestige that people would buy it just for the sake that they have it. Then actual care about the quality fucking Chanel and Balenciaga. I hate those brands. I hate those brands for a couple of reasons. But top number two reason for both of them is that they do not try. Sorry, I'm eating. This goes back to the original conversation about how the state of art is so fucking garbage. And it's for a combination of reasons. The number one reason is capitalism. And how art is treated as a product. Instead of as a medium. 
to be respected and stuff so like people have to create to serve the bottom line of some executive instead of actually like stretching their wings and stuff and uh, um well the art was always commercialized it's just that um we're in the last stages of capital we're in hyper capitalism capitalism in the olden days was a little bit better because like these companies were starting out and they had something to prove now they don't now that they don't have something to prove and people will show up anyways they don't have to try so like capitalist conditions that's number one number two number two right is um is the fact that people will show up regardless of the quality so why even bother and number three is that a lot of artists do not want to enhance their craft that they want to stay in their comfort zone and stuff and there's nothing wrong with like especially if you're doing art as a hobby but i feel like if you expect people to like buy sh should i get steak mashed potatoes and broccoli or finish my thai noodles um steak mashed potatoes and broccoli because didn't you eat like thai twice yesterday It can be pretty if people organize. Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot more like stuff like people doing rise and grind culture or killing themselves. But like, I need I need some actual organization. I'm gonna pause this um commission. Because I have some additional questions to ask Damon. Such as, what does the front of the wings look like? Since he's in front of the wings, not the back. And also, how does the face look? Because I'm semi-confident, but I'm also scared. I should also bring down the face a little bit. That's part of the problem. fact we might be in a new video game crash right now oh yeah there was like over what 8,000 layoffs in January and then the vast majority of them were marginalized people like that pisses me the fuck off and this is another thing like something that I hate about um with inclusion and art i hate how there there's so much emphasis on inclusion on the screen that people neglect what happens behind the screen like the reason why you don't see people who look like you or who are in the same demographic like you is because most likely they're not the ones working on the thing it's usually people of privilege right but people care so much about being validated by media and not necessarily about the working conditions of artists and this is where I sort of get frustrated with like quote unquote art appreciators or or art lovers or media lovers and stuff because like sometimes audience members can be fucking unsympathetic and stuff. You expect studios to respect you and all this other kind of stuff, but then you don't respect the people who actually have to make things. You will harass talent and not the executives who are really the ones in charge because if we're going to be straight up honest a lot of movies and stuff they're pretty much glorified commissions for billionaires who own the company they're not for the general public they're for the people who own the shit yeah there, there really is no such thing as job security at this point because um companies care more about ca cutting corners and screwing people over and stuff this is why we need mutual aid and there's no reason why we're struggling to like create mutual aid when we already have a strong foundation everybody's sharing the same twenty dollars like i don't know we could do it guys i believe in us 
I'm just I'm just sketching this out. I'm gonna actually use one of Vigalia's hairbrushes to do the puff. Shout out Vigalia. But no, we gotta stop. Um, I feel like when it comes to representation, I need people to stop looking towards big companies to provide that because big companies. I don't know how many times they have to prove this through shitty actions, but they have made it clear that um, they either only cater to us because of the money or sometimes even worse, they don't even see our money as worth getting because of who it's attached to. We need to support everybody and their mom wants an indie revolution, but in order to get that envy indie revolution, you have to create better support models for people in general, not just with artists because like with studios and stuff you need to provide for custodial you you need to provide utilities da, 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 da. like we need to have better systems where we connect with communities and start taking care of each other instead of expecting corporations and governments to do that because they've made it clear they don't give a fuck about us and since we're all sharing the same twenty dollars anyways yeah i feel sorry for the motion capture actors and models and with that particular, it's just gooning. Like, like I'm pro sexual expression and stuff, but at the same time, I'm very much anti porn industry because of the effects that it's had on the general populace and stuff. Like, I don't mind independent creators, but I hate studio made stuff, especially because of the working conditions and stuff, and how like so much mainstream whatnot is just really gross and racist and whatnot. But that's like a whole other stream to have a discussion on because like there's a whole rabbit hole with that. I've been researching this shit since October of 2018. Like y'all don't y'all don't understand how much information I have inside of me just waiting because something weird happened on the internet and I looked into something policy wise concerning it and then it's just like oh it's a whole problem out here. But I'm gonna save this. I'll send a screenshot to Damon. Because I have questions. And I want to do well. I got a month to do this. It'll take less than a month. Yeah. Like the problem is that people. Think that. Like sexy. Means dehumanizing. Even though. You shouldn't be sexy at the cost of your own humanity which is why i like characters like bayonetta for example because she's a sexy character but she has agency and she doesn't just exist to be a fantasy and stuff i also like miss bellum what time is it i'll work on yang for 10 minutes so i can actually say that i'm working on yang because holy shit, I have not worked on Yang, period. Because she's a difficult character to draw. She uses colors that I don't draw with. And that's part of the problem. We're gonna pray, guys. We're gonna sing Negro spirituals and hope that we have a good day. Do I have the cowboy hat in here? Where's the cowboy hat? I knew I had a cowboy hat picture of like different shapes of cowboy hats. It's not in here. I'm gonna cry. Near. Yeah, I like 2B. Although, like, to be, to be fair, um, near specifically Autonoma. Um, there is that one joke about looking under 2B skirt. At least they let her, like, swat away the camera. Cause, like, but that shouldn't even be an option in the first place. I'm sorry. But, like, I love 2B. She's hot. But, like... Mm. But, um... But, no, I have too much information about what goes into um, moderation of NSFW content and, like the history of sex work in the US and because like pretty much my advocacy when it comes to that is wanting better conditions for sex workers and also wanting like better conditions for kids because 
there isn't a separation of there isn't a separation of of adult spaces and general spaces and kids spaces and children are literally suffering because of that everybody in general is suffering but kids are facing the brunt of it because they literally have like way less resources and they're treated as second class citizens I also care because like I like drawing lewds and I want to be able to draw lewds without fear of like the FBI knocking on my house because like they're anti-sexual expression and stuff and they want to put women in a box because that's like largely a big problem but I also like am very particular about lewd expression and how I don't tolerate some forms of expression because I feel like I think that artists have an obligation to be socially responsible and that certain art has terrible messaging that can be harmful worldwide like literally look at birth of a nation it's black history man look up birth of a nation and look up the terrible effect that that's had the kkk was literally falling into decline it was about to just fade into obscurity until birth of a nation came out and then membership skyrocketed that is the power of film and yet people think that it's not like a negative thing if they like I don't know if they make race play or some shit because I was talking about AO3 and how I am praying on his downfall and that's one of the many reasons that I'm praying on his downfall like do you know how hard it is to be a black person who likes Star Wars and you're trying to find fan fiction and then it's just nothing but Mandingo type shit especially if you're like trying to look up Clone Wars content it's tough out here it's crazy also yes fighting game women shout out Dolores I love her design I'm gonna work until 10 o'clock my time which is in six minutes let's see what I can do probably not shit because like drawing drawing yang is hard is that delivery? It's the struggle. For those who don't know, I'm I'm drawing Yang because it's also Lunar New Year, and damn it, it's taken me like two years to do my Ruby redesign series, and I should have been done with it by now. But because of stuff like school and depression, and Yang being a character whose color palette I do not use it is it is difficult out here so I'm trying to do it for Lunar New Year because Yang's full name is Yang Xiaolong which means Golden Dragon Jr. or pretty much Little Dragon like her dad's name translates to Golden Dragon and she's pretty much Junior and that's so cute honestly And um, I'm redesigning her outfits for part four er, and part seven because that's what I've been doing for other Ruby characters. Because like they're cool looking outfits, but I'm not quite in agreement with the creative direction. So I'm redrawing them to fit my personal aesthetics. People say that cinema doesn't have any impact. Yeah. They inspire and bring hope, and they can also bring calamity. Like, why do you think, um... Why do you think so many... And this isn't even a conspiracy. This is actual history. Like, um, so many Jewish people worked in comic books. Like, Jack Kirby. Who else? I think Bill Finger was Jewish. So many Jewish people worked in comic books. And in cinema and stuff because a lot of them immigrated during the Holocaust or a little bit before because like the Holocaust did not just happen all of a sudden there was a gradual thing and anti-semitism was rampant in Europe and other countries for like a long ass time but entertainment was one of the few fields that they were allowed to be in because of anti-semitism and shit but also because it became imperative to be able to 
record and log what is happening to you and your people while folks have been trying to erase what's been going on and stuff so that's why you see folks like charlie chaplin charlie chaplin wasn't jewish but he's romani and he did the dictator as commentary and stuff in defense of other romani people that were facing mistreatment max fletcher who invented who made betty boop and um and coco the clown and stuff same same way it's why it's become so imperative for like marginalized people to have access to internet and that's why palestinians have been asking for esims and whatnot because being able to document atrocities and stuff and also not just document atrocities it's important for marginalized people to document joy you can't just have um you can't just have doom and gloom the doom and gloom spreads awareness about the mistreatment that's happening but it's important to have like joyous moments yeah i thought that he was romani through peaky fucking blinders and then i looked it up and it was confirmed <laughs> it was crazy i love peaky blinders but uh <laughs> But, um, but just it's important to show moments of joy because it shows that the pain and stuff that we go through is not normal and it should not be the norm. Showing us having moments of triumph and stuff that that should be the norm. We should be able to live and just have a good day and stuff so that's why whenever it comes to social commentary i think that it's very important to have joy be a part of it because we should not normalize this is what i meant earlier about how black people's oppression is largely rooted in our quote-unquote over representation in media because usually whenever we're presented we're usually painted as like like this is why so many people when um the movie the secret society of magical negroes how so many people were mess were pissed off that it was like a racial commentary movie because it's just like my thing is like on one hand it's kind of dumb to not expect it to be because it's literally named after a trope that is racial commentary but at the same time i understand the fatigue of like most of the major blockbusters that we have dealing with racial trauma because like why is it that non-black people only want to watch our stuff when we're going through hell it's why black panther had the reception the way that it was because it was just like finally a major blackbuster black blackbuster that um i don't know how to draw a cowboy hat i'll do it better later this is a sketch <laughs> I don't like this hat though I should fix it I should be better um because it was like showing black excellence and stuff even though it still had like racialized trauma as a part of it and stuff and diaspora beef but like the display of black excellence and imagining an Africa that wasn't colonized like that's why it, it was such a cultural cornerstone yeah there were black animators during the um 50s and 60s um damn it i can't remember his name because i literally went to a conference with him one time like one year um it was a zoom conference and stuff and um he worked on the jungle book Yeah, Zivia is currently working with a black comic artist. She's getting mentorship from him. I won't out him though, because I do have an opinion. I don't like, I don't know. I don't like the notion that you have to draw every day. Because to me, I'm very much a quality, not quantity kind of person. Mm-hmm. And I've actually seen some of his Batman covers. They're really good. They're really good. 
But now I'm very much like a. I'm not a practice makes perfect. It's more like a perfect practice makes perfect. And even though practice doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, it's more like how you practice is how you get better. But um, for those who are wondering why I'm drawing Yang Zhao Long as a cowboy, um, in volume four, after she like recovers from losing her arm, um, she goes to look for her mom, who's a uh, um, yeah, it was Floyd. To be honest, that's actually an interesting concept because, like, it'd be nice to see more steampunk that actually deals with punk themes. Because, like, okay, when a genre has the word punk into it, it needs to have political commentary because that's what punk is. Like, if you don't want to be political, then don't take from aesthetics that have politics rooted into it. It's like trying to make a Ghibli S thing and then you don't want to be anti war. Or have commentary on environmentalism. Like this is what I mean by um, people copying things because they're popular. But then removing the context that actually made it good. And that's where you get lowbrow derivative content. Wait, what about Raven's Goofy's a hard full case of the beats? How did that... No, I'm I'm more like where did that come from? Oh, I know about Blade starting to MCU. Oh. Um, let's see. I need a poncho. Damn it, which arm is the prosthetic arm? The right arm? Okay. Let me know when y'all come back. Which arm is the prosthetic arm? This one. Oh, so you were talking about Yang. Okay, no, I don't like that the MCU just made it into this factory machine making movies. I'm glad that we got a Blade trilogy before kind of yes. Also, yes, yeah, shout out Blade for making the MCU because like a bunch of people were like, no, it was, it was the X. Um, yeah, I will go sailing in just a minute. It was the X Men or it was Spider Man or, or even the Hulk, and it's just like no. DC was dominating in the cinema with Batman and stuff and mainly because of how campy um, Batman movies were at the time 
with like Batman and Robin and stuff, they usually saw superheroes as like family movies. And they definitely can be. We shouldn't shit on that. We should not shit on that. I, I wish we had more family Batman movies again. Shout out Mary Little Batman. But, um, Blade proved that superhero movies could be, well, could be dark and could be more action dark and stuff because like of course the Batman movies and Linda Carter's Superwoman TV show and stuff to be honest I'm half and half with a Batfam movie because like there's too many motherfuckers in the Batfam and there are some people that should not be in the Batfam like I'm in the weird school of Bat fandom that thinks that Jason should have stayed dead like I understand that DC has the ability to bring people back to life but I felt like he should have stayed dead in order to maintain the weight of like being Bruce's he's not Bruce's failure but it's just like you know Bruce feels like he failed and stuff because of his death I, I feel like that makes him more effective oh, so the reason why I'm giving Yang a poncho is because I want it um, where her prosthetic arm is hidden under the poncho and then if she gets like in a bar fight she could like take off the poncho to show that she has it yeah Jason Todd was Brucey in the back but I don't think that he needs to be like brought back to life because I, I dislike backlash of his beliefs I don't even think it's necessarily that because like I feel like a my problem with the no kill rule I think that Batman having a no kill rule is fine because like as long as there's like some backing to it and stuff like him being against killing as a superhero because he's already doing vigilantism and he doesn't want to be the executioner as well because there's too many roles and stuff or him um having a no kill rule because you know he's lost his parents and he doesn't want to like take away other people's families and he wants to try other avenues and stuff the problem is when he like when he prioritizes the life of villains over the safety and well-being of gotham and i feel like i kind of dislike that kind of bruce because i feel like the shitty writing and i feel like injustice in the new 52 are the main ones who have contributed to that even though batman literally before that phase used to kill motherfuckers as he should it's like he gives chances and he invests in his rogues gallery he's not as kind and like happy-go-lucky with them as flashes and that's because flashes rogues gallery are a little bit different but like bruce has done stuff like doing research to help um freeze cure his wife trying to help man bat get back together and stuff well get back to his human form and stuff and also a lot of people like to victimize his rogues gallery when a lot of them are like rich and powerful people who are using their resources to hurt others like Ichabod Crane Scarecrow was literally a college professor who was testing on his own students Penguin and Two-Face are mobsters who already come from rich families, but they're trying to enhance their riches and hurt more people. Victor's ass was also uh, a silver spoon until he gambled all his money away and then he became a serial killer because he's a baby back bitch. Like, no, some, some of these villains, they need their ass beat. But like, when he starts prioritizing the lives of his rose gallery over the safety of Gotham that's when it becomes a problem but having a Bruce that's compassionate and wants to find other avenues to deal with justice that's great that's actually a good thing Batman were to kill the police and commission will hunt him down if he killed Joker there would be a huge power vacuum in the crime syndicate all hell would break loose I actually would like that though I would like that I would like Joker to die and for Scarecrow to um, take up the mantle. Because I feel like Scarecrow is a, another good parallel. Not just because of the Arkham video games. But also because of um, 
but also because of the motifs right like um yes the copper pots were as rich and powerful but then they hit a decline and penguin going to crime is his way of trying to bring his family back to glory and he has a a severe um jealousy of the wings and stuff I'm literally just looking at McCree skins because those are like the best references I could get of pretty cool co um, cowboy stuff. But um, yeah. But I think that Scarecrow is a really good um, replace parallel to Batman because Batman's whole thing is dressing up as a bat to put fear into the minds of criminals. Whereas Joker uses comedy to terrorize the people of Gotham. And then um, with Joker gone, then you have Scarecrow. Um, Batman using fear to scare to scare criminals versus um, Scarecrow using fear to terrorize all of Gotham. So it's just both of them are using fear, but like how they utilize it. Fear as a source for good versus fear as a source for evil. And I think that's a really good motif. And also because I'm fucking tired of Joker. I'm, he's boring to me. Because um, people don't know how to use him. I love the Batman film. Actually the Riddler, the Riddler was always dangerous. It's just that he's a camp villain. But he was always dangerous. You don't know. You don't understand how dangerous it is. To have a fucking Redditor know all your business. Like if we're going to have a realistic red riddler a riddler without money and resources to build those death traps which is usually what he did with his riddles like he was pretty much just jigsaw if he looked like a redditor right whereas the um riddler in the batman movie he looks like the zodiac killer because he was inspired by the zodiac killer and it was pretty much commentary on like radicalization and stuff and how a lot of um violent radical dudes are losers because they are and because they are they are uh but um pretty much the dangers of that and stuff and how not taking care of people's needs ends up creating shitty situations like the riddler but um Yeah, I remember getting into a 2% argument with Yami Umai about it. Because he was just like, the Riddler is without the camp and stuff. And I feel like they should bring the camp. I feel like Batman is best when there is camp. Like, I love the Batman because of how... Yeah, I know the... Well, not necessarily the but um yeah i know about the 90s animation series and stuff and honestly that's very much a pretty good um pretty good origin because it shows his interest in games and how he's able to design these contraptions to torture people a lot of batman villains in the new animated series were people who got screwed over by working conditions honestly but um what time is it? It's ten sixteen. I'm gonna go ahead and go. I at least worked. I at least worked on Yang a little bit. I'm proud. I'm gonna chip at her bit by bit, and I aspire to finish her by the end of this month. I'm also going to be starting on my Tianomi series this weekend because I keep telling people that I'm gonna draw Tianomi, and then I don't. Shout out Kevin Conroy. I miss him. You know what pisses me off? When he when I found out that he died, I was sad, but I was also pissed off because I almost met this motherfucker. He came to a convention in my state, but he was only taking cash only and I didn't have any cash on me. And it's just like, why did you show up to this state of all states? And telling people to bring cash with them, knowing that niggas get robbed. Like, you're how many years old? And you don't have a square reader? So when everybody was just like, oh, Kevin Conroy died of cancer. And I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> it's like, it was sad because like he went too soon. He was just like in his 60s. 
and stuff and he's such a kind-hearted person but at the same time fuck <laughs> I was feeling some type of way because I was still pissed off like maybe if he brought that square reader things would have been different I could have blessed him but <laughs> I don't know but um but shout out Kevin Cobb but thank you guys <laughs> I'm so salty. <laughs> Screw cancer. Screw cancer. I'm so serious. But um, thanks to everybody who came in and watched me talk crap about stuff. I think it's important. Well, you were about to get food. So let me sign off before you get food. Um, Thanks for coming and listen to me talk smack and stuff. I think that we did a lot today. Because like, we definitely did a lot because I'm literally almost done with the sketch. Like, as soon as I get the advice that I need, then all I gotta do is the wings. Because usually, like, icons are pretty much easy for me because it's not that much to draw. Because it's an icon. But, um, but sketching in general takes a long time because, um, it's the planning stage. So, yeah. <laughs> Had a really awesome time here. I'm glad to talk to you about all kinds of topics. It was really good and chill. I'm glad that y'all had a good time. But I'm going to actually finish my burger because I only got halfway through it because I didn't start eating until I started streaming because I got food late. Rest in peace. <laughs> but y'all have a good evening. Get some rest. Stay above the water. <laughs>